Is Fair Isaac Corp stock ticker FICO a potential buy? Fair Isaac's owned by a few super investors who have consistently beat the market, including Valley Forge Capital Management, Lincel Train, and AKO Capital. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Fair Isaac. Then we're giving a rating to the business. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Fair Isaac's stock performance. Right now, Fair Isaac trades for $896.56 per share. They're nearly at their all-time highs. Year to date, they've crushed the market. Their stock price is up 52%, while the S&P 500 is up 20%. Fair Isaac's one of the best performing stocks of the last decade. They compounded at 33% annually. Their stock price increased nearly 17 times in just 10 years. That's insane. Going back before the global financial crisis, in the last 18 and a half years, Fair Isaac's compounding at 19% annually. Again, they're beating the market average and beating the S&P 500 over this time. Fair Isaac's trading $20 below their 52-week highs, which are their all-time highs. The company's up more than double from their 52-week low of $390. Around 2% of their shares are sold short, as it does seem the company has some lofty valuation multiples. Still, Fair Isaac's a big business, they have a $22 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why has Fair Isaac beat the market, and can they keep this up? Founded in 1956, Fair Isaac Corporation is a leading applied analytics company. Fair Isaac is primarily known for its FICO credit scores, which is a widely used industry benchmark to determine the credit worthiness of an individual consumer. The firm's credit scores business accounts for most of the firm's profits and consists of business to business and business to consumer offerings. In addition to scores, Fair Isaac also sells software, primarily to financial institutions, for areas such as analytics, decision-making, customer workflows, and fraud. Fair Isaac basically has a monopoly in consumer credit scores in the United States. Now let's look at their numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want Fair Isaac's average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average company earns around a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the business. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock's likely to return what its underlying business returns. These business returns are captured by return on capital. Fair Isaac's returns on capital have been up and to the right in all five of their last fiscal years. They earned 17% returns in 2018, but have been improving these in each year since. They earned just under 49% returns in their fiscal 2022. When these are averaged out, Fair Isaac earns around 30% returns on capital in a given year. That's four times better than a normal company. This is a huge check on metric number one. Metric number two, we want to see growth to support their high returns on capital. We're looking for five-year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. These all need to be up for this metric to be a check. We'll also include their last 12 months worth of numbers, which aren't shown here. In this time, Fair Isaac's grown their revenues by 47%. Their net incomes have tripled and the company's more than doubled their free cash flows. Great to see that they've had strong net income or earnings and free cash flow growth. This means their margins have increased over this time. The company's getting more out of their fixed assets meaning they're experiencing some operating leverage. This is a big check on metric number two as they're supporting their high returns. Metric number three, we wanna see earnings per share growth. This looks at Fair Isaac from the view of an individual shareholder. In this time, we learn their earnings or their net incomes have tripled. Also a pretty crazy stat, Fair Isaac has bought back 18.5% of their shares outstanding, repurchasing nearly a fifth of their company in the last five years alone. This adds to existing shareholders' ownership percentage in Fair Isaac. They've grown their earnings per share by an insane rate, more than quadrupling these in the last five years alone. This is another big check. Metric number four, we want to see free cash flow per share growth. This is a similar story, with their free cash flows more than doubling and these nearly 20% share buybacks. Fair Isaac has nearly tripled their free cash flows per share. This is huge free cash flow per share growth. Another check here on metric number four means we're perfect through our first four metrics. Does the business have what it takes to keep this going? In recessions, it's businesses with a lot of debt that can have the biggest losses. Metric number five, we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. In this time, Fair Isaac has added on to their net debt position. Right now, they have around $1.8 billion in net debt. In these last five years, when we add up all their free cash flows, 
the company's produced around $1.7 billion worth of free cash flow that's coming in slightly shy of their net debt position, meaning this is under what we're looking for. This is our first X of the day on metric number five. This may not be as bad as it would be for some other companies because Fair Isaac is really the standard in consumer credit reporting. They could potentially be taking on some debt. Additionally, they've generated $440 million of free cash flow in their last 12 months. If their current free cash flows are projected into the future, it looks like those are able to support their current net debt positions. So the fact that we're off here may just be because of the company's growth in the last five years. That's something you'd want to dig into and learn more about. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Fair Isaac's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for Fair Isaac. Right now, Fair Isaac has a $24 billion enterprise value. This looks at it similar to it being a private company by taking into account both their net debt position and their market cap. In the last five years, we learned they produced $1.7 billion of free cash flow, which means they produce around $340 million of free cash flow in an average year. When that's divided by their $24 billion enterprise value, we get just under a 1.5% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, Fair Isaac produced $440 million of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their $24 billion enterprise value, it gives us just under a 1.9% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Both of these are coming in below the yield from the 10-year treasury. They're less than half of the risk premium we're looking for. This means on metric number six, this is an X. Don't just throw the business out. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and give our rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Fair Isaac, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. Fair Isaac's been a somewhat predictable business in their past. We're starting with an average of their last three fiscal years worth of free cash flow, then using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate or not for the business. Assuming their average free cash flows grow at just under 20% annually for the next decade, then in the following decade, assuming this growth rate's cut in half and these grow at just under 10% annually, we won't add in their tangible book value as that's likely skewed based on how the accounting is done for their share buybacks. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, from today's valuation multiples, if these are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of Fair Isaac's fair value per share is around $361. That's down around $30 from their 52-week lows. Keep some key points in mind. This analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our rating to Fair Isaac, but we need to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors may be even more important for this business. Why don't we find out what they are? Looking at the factors supporting a long thesis, number one, Fair Isaac's software business has the potential for margin expansion. Number two, Fair Isaac has shown great capital allocation by having optimal leverage, repurchasing shares, and avoiding pricey and distracting acquisitions. Number three, FICO scores are an industry standard and the firm has a long runway to increase prices given they are small cost but often critical for lenders. But we'd be remiss if we didn't cover the negatives of their business as well. Looking at the factors supporting a short thesis, number one, Fair Isaac trades at a large premium to the credit bureaus and market overall, which could result in the stock seeing an outsized drop during a decline in sentiment. Number two, FICO faces a competitor in Vantage score, which along with FICO scores will be included in government conforming Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac mortgages. Number three, Fair Isaac's market leading position and pricing actions may result in antitrust scrutiny. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors of Fair Isaac's business. Now let's give our rating. We learned by analyzing Fair Isaac, stock ticker FICO, that this consumer credit rating company holds a near monopoly-like position in the United States. The business has phenomenal financials and their management has done a good job of allocating capital. They've increased their leverage and they bought back a ton of shares, but it looks like their current free cash flows are able to support this increased leverage. FICO earns huge returns on capital and they've increased their margins in the last handful of years. Keep in mind this analysis isn't financial advice. 
The company's free cash flow to enterprise value yields don't look attractive to the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, from today's valuation multiples, if these are the same 20 years into the future, if you want a 15% rate of return and you believe those assumptions, an estimate of FICO's fair value per share is around $361. While about $30 below their 52-week lows, FICO last traded at those levels in May of 2022. FICO looks like a phenomenal business that's trading for lofty multiples, while also starting to see some pressure and some scrutiny given their position in the market. When we look at all the factors of our analysis, FICO looks like a strong candidate for further research. Thanks so much for learning about FICO with me. Subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out this next video if you like this one.